Okay, let's take a look at uh, chapter 12. We've got some parsing questions here. Are there any questions about the parsing? Anything at all? So the question about the lexical form for any of the forms of altas, uh, whatever the gender is, uh, doesn't matter to me what I would suggest you do, like with number one, is that you put all three, altas, alte, altan, okay? If, if you've put over here, what by the way, what gender is that? It's neuter, right? It's neuter, and it's singular, and it's what case? Nominative or accusative, all right? Um, if you've told me neuter over here and you've given me all three forms, then I can be pretty confident. Oops, that's not Altan. Uh, I can be pretty confident that, that you know that this third one is, in fact, the one that really applies. But get used to writing all three. You, you really need to make sure you know those. We get to next chapter, Hutas Halte Tuta. You really just need to keep those three in your head when you think about what the word this is in, in Greek. All right, uh, question? Did you have a question? Uh, that I see a hand somewhere? Okay. Ah, maybe so. All righty. Good. So, alta, salte, alta. All right. So, it. By the way, for the inflective meaning for any of these forms of altas, it's really sort of a crapshoot here because we have no context. We don't know whether it's the pronoun, the adjectival use, and if it's the adjectival use, which one? Same, himself, itself, right? It could be anything. So a little bit more latitude that way. Without any context, I would assume these are the pronoun, though. It would be the easiest thing to do. All right. Anything else? Can I have you look at number eight real quickly since it's one of our newer words? <laughs> number eight, what is the lexical form here for pada? It's pus. Okay. And what declension pattern does it follow? Third, yes. What gender is it? Masculine. Great, so if I know that that's uh, a third declension form, then that's my case ending. It's got to be what? Accusative and singular. All right, how am I going to translate this? Just foot, okay? Like as a direct object. I slammed my foot in the door. Poos becomes podamu, I slammed podamu, I slammed my foot. All right, we all good? Let's look at the warm-up questions here. Any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, in behalf of. I've never said in behalf of. Um, let me see, is it this one? Yes, some of you should have struggled with Ada until you got what the answer was. Ada? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Epsilon is, uh, is that one, right? Her flesh? <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. We can. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's look at epsilon, and then uh, we'll look at epsilon, zeta, and eta together real quickly. Okay. So the big question is whether the form of altas that we see is the noun or or the pronoun or the uh, the adjectival use. Uh, so over here. Notice that there's an article in front of it. So what does that tell you? That it is an adjectival use. Very good. Is it next to a noun that it agrees with in case, gender, and number? 
No? What case gender number is Sark's? It's nominative, and it's feminine, and it's singular. What about Alte? It is the same. Yes? So the form of Alte is next to a noun that it agrees with in case gender number. That makes it adjectival looking, doesn't it? Okay, good. This is just another confirmation here that we're dealing with an adjectival use of altas and not the pronoun. So you can't say the she flesh. <laughs> we can talk about man flesh, right? But not she flesh. All right. Uh, next question then is, if I figure on it being an adjective, I've got two possibilities, identical or intensive. Which one goes, uh, how do you determine which one is which? Okay, whether it's attributive or predicate position. If it's in the, let's say in the attributive position, which one is it? Identical, so attributive position. If it's predicate position, it's the intensive. All right, which position is this one in? Attributive. I have the article in front of the adjective, that's an attributive position, and I need to translate this as the identical adjective, so it's the same flesh or body. All right, now over here, I have altas ha'afthalmas estin kalas. Now, here's my form of altas. Is it beside a noun? And don't worry about the article. I'm looking for, you know, this noun phrase, the I, the I, is it next to a form of altas? And does it agree in case gender number? Yes, it does. What is the case gender number of all of these? Nominative, singular, masculine, all three cases. Okay, so this is also an adjectival use. Which adjectival use is this? Well, what position is it in? Is it attributive or predicate? It's predicate position. Predicate position will be an arthris, no article. Okay? It'll either be before the article and its noun or after the article and its noun, but not in between them. Okay? So this is the intensive. And how are we going to translate this? Self, yes, itself, in this case, because we're dealing with an I. So the I itself is kalas. Oh, you know, um, I, th I think he's echoing a, a passage in the Gospels. Now, let's take a look at Ada, okay? We have pistuo, I believe. And then I have ta alta. All right. Is this form of altas next to a noun that it agrees with in case, gender, and number? No. So you should assume that this is the pronoun, right? Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. You should not assume this. Under normal circumstances, you could, right? But you do have an article right in front. Can I articulate a pronoun like this? Like a personal pronoun? No. No. So uh, this is not going to be, I believe, it. Okay? So uh, this is an adjectival use then. And that means that I, under normal circumstances, would go through this process and say, okay, which pronoun? position is it in, and I don't have a noun for it to be in a, that kind of position with, except for the fact that when my adjectival form of altas is in an attributive position, it comes after the article, doesn't it? It's articular. And then I would normally have a noun that it agrees with. So what's going on here? I'm missing the noun. Can adjectives occur with the noun missing? Hmm? Apparently so, yes, because adjectives can be substantival, as Kurt has mentioned, right? So, ha agathos anthropos is the good man. Ha agathos 
is the good masculine singular one. Okay, so I can have a noun, or excuse me, I can have an adjective functioning as a noun in that case, right? So this is what I, I'm dealing with here. So it's, I believe, the same implied thing. Whatever that adjective is a substantival adjective for, whatever it stands for is neuter, whatever, whatever that is. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe the same thing. All right? That makes sense? So we're going to see a few more examples like this. So here it is the identical adjective functioning substantively. Okay? Any questions about this or anything else in the warm-up exercises? All right. Let me just do a little thought experiment with you on delta. I have altoi gar a sin hoi podis humon. Which form of altos is that? Or how's it functioning? Pronoun? Independent pronoun? Or is this the uh, adjectival use? Okay, this looks like a pronoun, doesn't it? For, how would you translate this? They are hoi podis, the feet, humon, of you, for they are your feet. All right. Now, what if I had had <coughs> hoi altoi gar, a sin hoi podis humon? Would this be the pronoun use? No, because the article is now in front of it, right? It's one of the adjectival uses. Which adjectival use would this be? Okay, it's an attributive position, but with the noun that would normally go after the adjective missing, right? The adjectival noun. So, how would I translate this? It's a substantival use. The same ones are your feet. That doesn't make any sense to us because we have no context. But that's how you translate it. The same ones, the same masculine plural people or things are your feet. All right? Okay, good. And then if I had, back up here and get rid of this. Okay, altoi, hoi, uh, I don't know, apostoloi. Gar as a scene, hoi padas humon. How would you translate that? The apostles themselves. This is next to the same case gender number of an article and noun. It's in the predicate position. It's intensive, right? The apostles themselves are your feet. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? Okay, let's take a look at the translation work. Okay, so number one, ferrite, bring altan prosme. Um, quick question before we get to the pros part. Uh, which use of altas is this? You sure that's a pronoun use? Mm hmm. Yep. If it weren't a pronoun, what would I be looking for? A noun in what case? Accusative, because this is the direct, direct object, right? So something like bring the same one or bring the someone himself. Ain't got nothing else here. This is the pronoun. So bring him. Pros may? Uh, pros usually just indicates direction towards the object of the preposition. So to me. All right. Now, what case does pros take its object in? based on this. It's accusative. Accusative. Okay, so pros, you'll expect accusative case. This is, this is one where you won't expect another case. Pros takes the accusative case here. 
All right, so bring him to me. Kai, A Nenkan, and they brought Altan. <laughs> Whoa, which use of Altas is this? It's the same. And they brought him Pras Altan. What use of Altas is that? The same. So pronoun, pronoun, right? So to him. They brought him to him. Yeah, so uh, normally when you have pros as a lexical form, it has the acute. In a situation where it's followed by another noun that has its own accent, the, it, it switches to, to a grave accent. <coughs> All acutes on a final syllable, so pros is the only syllable and therefore the final syllable. All acutes on a final syllable when followed by another word with an accent will switch to grave. Okay? Here, may is what's called an enclitic, and it doesn't have its own accent. It leans on the prior word for its stress. So this basically functions as one accentual unit. And therefore, there's, since the period is here, there's no other noun or word with an accent that follows. So it, it retains its acute accent mark. All right? Initially, it was a matter of pitch. So our acute's going up, grav's going down. <clears throat> but yeah, there's no difference in meaning between these forms, for sure. All right, other questions? All right, let's read this uh, together. Ready? Parakalo de humas adelfoi dia tu anamatas to Kuriu Hemon Iesu Christu Hena Ta Alta Legate Pontes. All right, good. Uh, Parakalo, he tells you it means? I urge. Day is what kind of a conjunction? It's post positive. It happened second. Translate it first in your English. So now, you could translate this as now, but, and. I urge you. Uh, what case is humas? Accusative. What number is it? We know it's plural. First or second or third person? Second person. Remember, hamas, humas, the one with the U means you. All right? See the oops on there? That's a U. Okay, so I urge you. Now I urge you, brothers. Dia tu anamatas tu kuriu hemon Yesu Christu. What's what kind of word is dia? It's a preposition, which means I'm looking for the rest of a prepositional phrase. Object of the preposition will be in a particular case. All right, so tu anamatas is in the genitive case. Now dia. With a genitive object means what? Ah, yes. What were the two cases that can follow dia? Genitive and accusative. When it's genitive, it means through. When it's ac accusative, it's because of or on account of. All right? So this one is genitive. So through... Yes, so through the name. Now, so why is anamatas genitive? Because of dia, the preposition requires it, if, with that meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Again, if you look this up in the lexicon, you're going to find actually several other translation glosses for dia plus the genitive. Now, um, Look at Tukuriu. What case is that? So it's the Lord. That's also genitive. Now, why is this one genitive? Okay, well, yes, it is. Is it genitive because dia requires this one to be genitive? No. It's genitive because, yeah, it's in a genitive relationship with the head noun. 
Okay, so some things are genitive because they're in a genitive relationship with a head noun. Other nouns are genitive because the preposition that governs them requires the genitive. Okay, so these are genitive for different reasons. It's not because the uh, makes everything in it genitive. Although, when you look at the, this whole thing, every single stinking word here is in a genitive case, isn't it? But not for the same reasons. All right? So, through or in the name of the Lord, Hamon, what case? Well, it's genitive. So, who's Lord? Our Lord. So, this is genitive because it's in a genitive relationship with the head noun kurios. Okay? And then, Yesu Christu is in genitive case. All right. Here's the question. Why is Yesu in the genitive case? <laughs> is it in a genitive relationship with Kuriyu? So is it the Lord of Jesus? Does Jesus have a Lord? Okay, it's an apposition. Excellent, excellent, Phil. So it's genitive because it is an apposition to Lord. Anytime you have an appositive that's renaming another noun, it will share the case of the noun. Since this noun is what it's in apposition with, and since it's genitive, the appositive has to be in the genitive case too. If it had been, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, what case would the Lord be in? Accusative, and what case would Jesus be in? It'd be an accusative as well, because it's an apposition to Lord as the object of Love. Okay? Now, Christu, why is that in the genitive case? Exactly. It's the same reason, but it's an apposition to Jesus. Jesus, namely the Christ. Okay? All right. Good. So I think we have been genitive out. <laughs> okay. So this is, all of this forms the basis of this plea, right? So I urge you what? I urge you, henna, and he tells you, translate this as, not in order that, but that. That, ta al ta legate pontus. All right, let's talk about this for a minute. What case could ta al ta be in? It could be nominative or accusative, number, singular, and gender, neuter. All right. Look over here, pontus. What case gender number could that be in? Could be masculine, plural. Oops, I think we put the number first. So masculine, plural, and nominative. It can't be anything else. Okay. That is reserved for third declension masculine and feminine forms, right? That S. But if you remember, pas, pasa, here's, here's where you should remember all three, pan. Okay? The feminine is following what declension pattern? It's first declension. So its plural is going to be pasai, not pontus. Remember, this is a 2 1 2 pattern. So that third declension <laughs> case ending only belongs to the masculine one of these two possible third declension endings. The neuter plural nominative does not have S, it has an alpha, right? Panta, like somata and anamata and so forth. Okay, so this can only be no uh, nominative plural masculine. So here's the question. <clears throat> This could be nominative, and this could be nominative. Which one of them is the subject of legate? Or goes with the subject of legate? Which one? It's got to be pontes, because subjects are nominative case, right? So it's basically saying 
that you all say. I urge that you all say. And so ta'ata must be the direct object. And therefore, it's going to be the accusative, not the nominative. Although nominative is theoretically possible. That you all say the alta. Now, is this the pronoun use of altas? Nope. It's got the article in front of it. It must be the, it's the identical adjective use. That you all say the same thing. That you all say the same thing. Meaning that you all agree with one another. Okay? Mm hmm. Uh, all right. Got it now? All right. Very good. That makes sense to everybody? It does now? All right. 